Hello ladies and gentlemen over the past year it is now clear that artificial intelligence or AI is now among the biggest causes of disruption for businesses it promises to bring new efficiencies but there are concerns or bias and the ethics of AI as well i am satish john managing editor at mint and on a new show with salesforce india where we explore how the industry and the workforce is working with AI the benefits accrued so far and what is the next frontier In today's episode we speak to Arundhati Bhattacharya chairperson and CEO at Salesforce India on our experience of driving the India business and the role that AI plays in it. Thank you for taking the time out. April 2020 you were appointed as the first CEO of Salesforce India. Um, in terms of scripting the journey in India, you know, uh, you had a major role in that sense. So, um, you know, has everything panned out the way you envisioned? You know, in this um, more than four years now. Yeah, I would think so. I think so, and the reason I'll tell you why is because when I came in, they had these very disparate groups. You know, there was a sales and distribution group, there was a technology and products group, there was a a uh, support and success group but each of these groups had their leaders but there was nobody that was bringing them together in order to create that one salesforce vision and in order to ensure that each of these groups were actually developing the salesforce dna and when i mean the salesforce dna salesforce again is a very values driven company so you know you can wake up any of my guys in the middle of the night and they will be able to rattle off the values So our values are trust, customer success, innovation, equality, and sustainability. So the kind of DNA that you need to develop in a large organization that was not really happening because there was no centralizing force. So they brought me in as the CEO with a very clear mandate. In fact, the first time I met Mark in his home office in San Francisco. I was dithering about whether I should take this job or not and he had asked me to come over to the Salesforce tower there and in order to meet his people and meet him and then take a call. The first question that he asked me as I walked into his office is why is Salesforce India not amongst the top few in the great places to work? I knew at that point of time because I had done a little reading up on Salesforce. I knew we were at number 36 at that point of time. and i almost felt like saying well you know better than me because i'm an outsider how do i know why it is at number 36 though we shouldn't be uh, by the way we are now number 4 well, in salesforce you be addressing this issue of artificial intelligence which is a big opportunity for you know, for companies like salesforce you know it is our future absolutely But there is also this fear that you could get jobs and it could you know, you know the ethics part of it is also an issue where many of the corporate captains are kind of um, looking closely at how do you see this uh... so you know every single industrial revolution that we have had people have had the same fear okay uh, have the jobs really come down they haven't the world has uh, the population has grown people are still working uh, i think it is important for us to take away the fear factor and make them look at it far more closely today if you look at a place like india so many of our people don't have the basic facilities and services because we just don't have the ability to serve them where they need to be served now what's the solution to it the only solution is technology if you think about the prime minister's janthan yojana okay we had tried to do financial inclusion a long time before that also it didn't really happen it happened this time why did it happen this time it was of course run as a project done in a very thoughtful manner but one of the two major very major things that assisted us okay the accelerators for that were the fact that we had uh, aadhar which helped us do the kyc which we were not able to do earlier and aadhar is totally technology based as you know and the other one was the spread of mobiles because then we could actually use the mobile which is why it's called a jam trinity you know the jandhan the aadhar and the mobile 
so without these three that inclusion that happened during that time inclusion meaning the opening of bank accounts we went on from i think there were about 58% or 60% of people had bank accounts in a matter of 6 7 months we managed to open one bank account per family for 98.5% of the people now you consider today a state hospital the doctors there are so overworked most of the time they can't even look up to look at the patient's face now if you use ai over there to gather the symptoms of the people who are there and thereafter come up with an initial initial diagnosis and present that to the doctor the doctor at least will be able to look up and instead of starting to gather the symptoms will be able to see what is there and go straight to go into the next level of checking so if you look at for instance say insurance there is always a fear of missile okay are they selling correctly or not now many of these insurance companies they record the conversations okay before they close the sale now those conversations are again checked by uh, their managers to see whether they are saying anything which is not quite right now imagine if ai could do this instead today the managers can only do a few random checks they can't check everything it's impossible because so many of their agents are working okay so 100% check is not there but now if ai comes in ai can check it for you and tell you that this guy said these things which were not supposed to be said for this particular scheme so take him in for a counseling for an enablement session and then if there are repeat offenses find out what the hell is happening and take action on it okay so there is so much that we can still do where technology is required ai is required and all of this will actually make the standard of living better create more jobs so i think we should stop and think a little has technology over the years made our lives and our standard of living better or not it has so if that is the case why should the latest one start the you know scaring us major lamens in india is that productivity is an issue do you think this could help us you know uh, cover that uh, gap absolutely absolutely i think uh, productivity is something that can very well be covered the only thing is when ai is concerned it's become a little bit of a buzzword okay so i think people need to be a little more deliberate about it more focused about it first and foremost you know if you're talking ai you have to determine what are the use cases what are you wanting it for you have to determine whether you want productivity whether you want more of customers mind share whether you want to ensure that uh, customers have a better experience so you have to determine what are the use cases you want just summarizations you want people coming on new to the team to very quickly scale up you've got to actually determine what the use cases are you've got to ask that question once that question is answered then you have to decide that is my organization structured in a manner that it will provide the right inputs for the ai to work properly and where will be the inputs be the inputs will be in the data so do you have a right data strategy will you be if do you really know data could be in a data lake it could also be in your loan origination system it could also be in certain other unstructured areas maybe the social media so do you really know where those islands of data are because da- data always comes into an island and only a few people have access to it what you then need to have is a data strategy that opens up that data for ai to actually work on it and we have a product called data cloud that's almost like a mesh and that sort of plugs into your various uh, you know sources of data takes no copy zero copy but takes the intelligence and then comes up and uses ai to give you your outputs and the third thing you need is a buy in from your people because just as you started this questioning on ai by saying people are scared if people are scared you will face a lot of headwinds 
as you try to implement any of this. You may want productivity to go up, but it's not going to happen unless your people are behind you and pushing. All of y'all are pushing in the same direction. You push in one direction, they push back, you're not going to make much progress. Of course, you know, there will be risks. You need to understand the risks as well. One thing I learned as a banker very early on is don't do something where you don't understand the risks. Best to avoid it. So I remember during the financial crisis, you know, the Lehman crisis, uh, earlier to that, there were a lot of people who approached us with all these, uh, you know, derivative products based on these mortgage loans. And we, for the life of us, I mean, at least I couldn't understand what they were talking about. No idea of the risks. We avoided, we steered clear of all of that. Oh, and on cyber security, you know, this is again a major, since um, you deal with a lot of data. Yes. Uh, how do you see this, you know, this data breaches? So, you know, there are a few areas where we make substantial investment. One of those major areas is cyber security. We are as aware of the fact that, you know, this is something which needs a lot of attention and we do pay it a huge amount of attention. So the security posture is one where we are investing on a daily basis uh, because it's also a fact that the bad actors, they're not going to stay still. They're always going to be trying to get a step ahead of you. And it's you, it's up to you to ensure that you are a step ahead of them. In any case, uh, at least in India, we are using third party infrastructure. So the infrastructure players have their own security layers, but we use on top of that our security layers as well. If you have a, a public cloud infrastructure, it's like staying in a compound which has a number of towers. So you have the, mm -hmm. the perimeter security, then you have the building security, and then you have your own apartment security. So actually there are layers and layers of security. And much of the security is being played by is being provided by people whose you know whose expertise is in that okay it's not a company that's doing other things that's also providing this their bread and butter depends on ensuring that the data is secure so yes there is a lot of spend that goes on security it's the one thing believe us that keeps us awake at night because it's something that we have to be constantly uh, aware of and guard against, uh, but we try and do it to the best of our ability. We see state-owned banks following, you know, um, maybe taking advantage of uh, companies like Salesforce um, in the times to come. Whether the state-owned banks will uh, follow suit or not is definitely dependent on them. It's definitely not. I mean, so I would love love for it to happen, but uh, I don't know whether it will. However, having said that, it is true that the state-owned banks also are feeling the need to go in for digitization. As you know, most of the banks have most of their systems on-prem, that's on-premises. What AIML, which is artificial intelligence and machine learning, and what generative AI does is, it needs a lot of data to be processed in order to come out with outcome or output that has true intelligence. So the data sets that need to be processed are very large data sets. And therefore, what it needs is very large server capacities, both for compute and storage. Now, if you're going to create that kind of server capacity in your on-premise system or even in private clouds, Private clouds are the same as on-premise, excepting it is not on-premise, it's at some data center. It becomes very expensive, extremely expensive, because you are dedicating the entire server for doing a particular processing job, which is not 24 by seven, maybe an hour amongst the 24 hours, and that too not regularly. To create that kind of capacity, is very tough because it's very capital intensive. And that is why the public cloud has become so common across the globe. Because in public cloud, what happens is it's a uberization of capacity. When you need the capacity, you bring it up. When you don't need it, you bring it down. So, you know, you don't, you're not constrained. As a 
former chairperson of uh, State Bank of India, how, which is also a big challenge to run. How is this different, Tani, for for you? I was in fact just discussing with uh, some of the youngsters here. In State Bank of India, the average uh, age of the workforce was closer to mine. Here, this is not the case. You know, probably I'm dealing with three to four generations below me. The people who are here are much younger. And uh, understanding their requirements and what really are their aspirations is not always very easy because they have changed since the time we were there. It's not all about money, okay? It's also about them really feeling satisfied about what they're doing. So that's why, you know, the, the Salesforce, by the way, has a very uh, good uh, giving policy. It's called one by one by one. So every year we give 1% of our profit or equity. In India, it's 2% because of the law. 1% of our products and 1% of our time to the nonprofit sector. So we actually give products at almost zero cost so that the nonprofit sector can also be equally uh, efficient in doing their job. So we give those products. We give 1% of our time. That means that all of us, we get a whole week's paid time off to go and serve and volunteer at whatever NGO we want. So they used to do a lot of things. So they take all of this VTO work, as we call it, the voluntary work, very, very seriously. And by the way, the seven days of leave that we get in order to do this job, it's monitored the same way as any of our other KPAs, okay? Uh, whether I'm actually doing it or not, I've got to log it and show that I'm actually doing it. And those are the sort of things that appeal to those youngsters. This giving back, like it makes them feel very interested. So the workspace has to be very different from the workspace that I was used to. There are, however, things which are also similar in the sense that at the end of the day, both are services industry. There I was selling financial products. Here I'm selling IT products. Okay, that's the basic difference. But the person at the center is still the customer. But the difference from where I was to where I am now is there I had to always, my one of my biggest agenda was to try to push the customer to the center to make people think from the outside to the end. Think about the customer, what are their pain points, try and get products out that address those. Not products that you think are going to be good, but products that your customer thinks are going to be good. A company like Salesforce on the other hand actually does that. They think from outside to the end. So they are forever trying to find the pain points of customers, forever trying to see how customers can succeed more or better and then creating the products around those ideas. The work that you do with the startups in India, well, if you could... Uh... Yes, yeah, so we do have a you know startup program in India. Uh, what we are doing, which is different from many other startup programs is, we are basically creating a community. A community that tries to help them out with ideas, with tools, with platforms, with connections, all of that. So. We have developed a startup community. We enable them to get together. We, if they come to us with any particular issues, they would like to uh, do some things on our platform, we enable them for that. If they want to put something on our uh, Apex Chain store, which is, you know, like places where they put their products, we enable them for that. Uh, we ensure if they need connections, with people who can actually sell them, we try and give, give them that. Thank you, Arundhati, for your time. And it was a very great, uh, interesting discussion. Thank you. Most welcome.